Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture reading comes to us today from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. I'll all be reading from the message. <clears throat> he handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastor teacher to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working with, within Christ's body, the church, until we are all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's Son, full, excuse me, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. No prolonged infancies among us, please. We'll not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are easy prey for predators. God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth, and to tell it in love, like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything that we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath, the blood flows through us, nourishing us, so that we will grow up healthily in God robust in love. single one of those days. 
I didn't understand that God would love me so completely and eternally and some days with absolutely no reason whatsoever for doing so. My faith wasn't mature enough to know any of these things. Now it's a funny balance because Paul is telling us in this scripture in Ephesians that Jamie read for us to grow up. And then we've got Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew saying, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter, enter the kingdom of God. What the heck? Over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking a little bit about how we've each been given gifts. And Lisa even gave you a spiritual gifts inventory to fill up. But this passage in Ephesians is talking about um, how God had already anointed these listeners with these gifts, and it was dang well time for them to start nurturing them and claiming them and using them. The gig's up. It was Paul was telling them in Ephesians, the gig's up, get to work. And we're in that crowd of listeners today. And I wonder if they thought, as maybe some of us do, great, I'm in, I'm ready. Where do I start? What's the next step? Let's go. I'm going to ask you to find a pew Bible near you. If you would, if you can find one near you. And I'm going to ask you to turn to page 501 in the Old Testament. 501 in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is in the first half of the Bible. Well, we don't all know that. It's okay. Page 501. Everybody got it? So you're looking at the 23rd Psalm. And I know it isn't the King James Version, so it's wrong. Because everybody knows when you're reading the 23rd Psalm, you read the King James Version. But let's read this together, can we? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even, Even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. You can keep that near you. Just keep that open and near you. When you become a pastor, there are definitions that start to stick about how now we have now we now have a flock. I remember hearing that in seminary that your flock they refer to your flock that we would shepherd that flock to the best of our abilities. That we will lead people to grow in Christian maturity, which is kind of what we're talking about today. And I can tell you that the job description in the United Methodist Book of Discipline is pages long. It's completely un unobtainable, but I am ever hopeful. But what I've come to discover is that in the 23rd Psalm, there's only one rescuer, and it isn't me. And when I forget that, you know what I end up being? I end up being the sheepdog. I end up being the sheepdog. I'm nipping at heels, I'm rounding up strays. I'm trying to keep this one or that one from falling into the ravine. I'm chasing away perceived wolves. And if I want to carry this metaphor to the absolute limit, I get distracted. I wander off myself. Once in a while, I even get kicked in the face by a wolf. I was never meant to be the true shepherd. And the setting doesn't call for a sheepdog. So I'm a sheep, just like everybody else. We're all sheep persons when we forget that, that we end up lost and running around in circles instead of moving forward in faith and 
in purpose and in action. And we say, as Jamie read earlier, babes in the woods, an easy prey. For all that tries to separate us from our purpose, from our calling, from our gifts, for all that tries to separate us from each other, and there is a plethora of things, there is politics and, and people and positions that will try to separate us. We have one thing in absolute common. We are sheep under the holy protection of the one who will bring rest and assurance and direction and nourishment and welcome to each one of us when we need it. Now we're going to take a few minutes to read the 23rd Psalm again, but you're going to do it to yourself. And we, not yet, Leanne's going to play during this time. And here's what I want you to sit with, and I, and I encourage you to be honest to, and to take this time of reflection in as a sheep, not a rescuer. You don't have anything else to do, not a sheep dog. And there's three questions I want you to think about as you read this to yourself as Leanne is playing. The first one is, what gifts has God handed to you that you are already using? And I'll, I'll go through this, these three questions twice. The second question is, how are you growing those gifts in service to Christ? And the third question is, what is your prayer? So they are, what gifts has God handed to you that you're already using? How are you using those gifts in service to Christ? And then, um, what's your prayer? What is, what is your prayer? Okay? Go ahead and read through it yourself.
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.